Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zane, better known as the King Bahamut, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 1 on the NES. Boy howdy, does it feel good to be back to recording. I took a break for a couple of days because my editing rig became uh, unusable for a little bit, um, so I had to take a break. Uh, in that time, I did some grinding and I got up to level 21. I bought myself a bunch of uh, magic, uh, a lot of which was kind of useless. I bought some spells for Brian here. Um, and I bought up to tier 7 of magic for everybody but myself. And I also bought the Cat Claw from the weapon shop in Gaia. Uh, this is actually the best knife that black wizards can equip. Um, so Lewis is all set in terms of weapons. He's not getting anything else for the rest of the game because he don't need it. Uh, in this episode, we are going off to tackle the next dungeon that houses the next uh, elemental fiend. Uh, which means I have to take a minute to figure out where I'm going. Here we are. This volcano here. This is Gurgu Volcano. It's the site of our next trial. I'm going to use a tent real quick just to save the game. Let's go. This is Gurgu Volcano. Uses the same music track as the uh, Earth Cave does, which is good because it's a good track. You probably noticed that we have a whole bunch of lava tiles that we can't uh, step on. Or, if we step on, we take damage. We also have red gargoyles here. Now, enemies in this dungeon are tend to be weak to ice spells, uh, if as you can probably guess. Um, but I do recommend you save your ice spell charges, um, because obviously we have a boss, uh, towards the end of this dungeon. Unless your enemies happen to be able to cast fire too, and do over 100 points of damage. I probably should not have stuck around to fight these guys. I definitely should not have stuck around to fight these guys. Uh, fuck. Are we gonna get fucking party wiped at the start of this goddamn dungeon? We are probably going to get party wiped. That is actually bullshit. down one black wizard. Um, this is awkward. Uh, I think I may have to... You know, I think I may just have to reset, because I don't really uh, want to have to deal with this nonsense. Um, I don't really want to expend resources on healing everybody up, so uh, give me a minute. Hey, remember when I said that the game was going to get so much easier after the Ice Cavern? Uh, yeah, that I may have been... Uh, Exaggerating. We have a fire elemental here on a booby trap in the floor. Uh, as you can guess, he is weak to ice magic, so if you got that, then by all means use it. I don't exactly want to be going willy nilly with my ice magic spell charges, especially my ice 2 spell charge, because we have a boss coming up, and the fast spell would be very, very helpful for that, as you can imagine. That's the one thing. It is appropriate that we are in a volcano because I am currently <laughs> very hot and sweaty right now because it is a very hot day where I am living and I am stuck in my room with no capacity to run a fan or air conditioning and I have to keep the windows closed to keep ambient sounds to a minimum. 
so I feel like I'm in a goddamn sauna. But we get a silver helm for our troubles. And down here, we have another booby trap. Yep, another fire elemental. Uh, I think I'm just gonna bop him with physical... I don't know, I, I use just the regular ice one spell. <laughs> yeah, these fire elementals, they're basically, you know, like the earth elementals we fought in the earth cave, except they're on fire, which makes them weak to ice magic. And they're also a little bit stronger. I say that, and he misses. <laughs> Sometimes this game uh, feels compelled to be nice to me. Sometimes. Let's just knock this guy out so I can get my Tejror. And in the box we get money. We have more peds. I am not bothering with these things. So with that out of the way, let's continue exploring and grabbing treasure boxes found on this floor. And running into Paralisks, which can... I think they can uh, turn characters to stone. Um, and I don't, I don't know... Um, oh, yes... Oh, they can instant kill you! That's, uh, good to know. Um. Alright, so please bring Brian back to life. And use Cure 4. That's a full heal. That was super weird. I, I am not used to seeing the knight's, uh, death sprite. Uh. Because the knight tends to not die a lot, unless he's hit with a instant kill. We get more money, and more enemies, and I'm getting first striked. Uh, you know what, what the hell, I'll bot these guys. Come on. Pop him, please. Hmm. That's convenient. Brian deals 2 2 2. Okay. Alright. And this treasure chest over here. Um, I don't want to deal with these things. Hang on. All right. So this treasure chest down here has a booby trap. Oh, we have two fire elementals. That's, uh, that's actually kind of annoying. Um. my first of two ice three spell charges like I said I want to be saving those uh, I want to be saving my ice two spell charges so that I can cast fast on my physical fighters when it comes time to deal with the boss oh no none of that please Thankfully, Ice 3 is, no, well, maybe not quite enough to mop him. But, it does do big damage. Oh, that could have been bad. Inside the treasure box, you find a giant sword. It's another one of those magic weapons that has its secondary effects not work. 
because of glitches. I, and like I said, I don't remember weapon stats off the top of my head, so I'm not, oops, I'm not terribly privy to how good it is without consulting walkthroughs. Oh, good lord, the heat in this room is getting to me. Uh, I think I have made a mistake. As per usual with a lot of these late-game dungeons, I do recommend you try to run as much as possible, because there's gonna be a lot of enemies here. Uh, and unless you're fighting one, like this singular red hydra, may not be in your best interest to have to deal with, uh, deal with big packs of enemies. Just one, and you can get through pretty easily. Da, da, da. Go through here, and get this treasure chest with more fire elementals. Oh dear. Um, ice too. Ice, and please heal everybody. Lewis Castle Ice 2. And please do it before they destroy everything. Nice double dose of ice. And Brian has the ice sword, which isn't actually all that useful because it doesn't deal extra damage to anything. But it does have a nice attack power, so... chest gives us money and more money and oh lordy there are so many enemies here okay so uh, I don't know what else is on this floor I probably should have looked at my guide a little bit more closely before coming in here so that I wasn't stumbling around because Boy howdy, was there a lot of stumbling around in the last episode. Blech. Oh, we've got a bunch of treasure chests here, but if I am remembering correctly, a lot of them are empty. Touch this thing. Heal. Potion. Cabin. Another silver helm, another piece of armor that I don't have room for. Um, honestly, we can drop the silver helms because they are of no use to us currently. Get a silver gauntlet, which is also not great. We get money. We get. I think this space is booby trapped, but I don't remember. Uh, this Grey Worm here, I don't remember exactly what, uh, what abilities it has. I think it's also weak to ice, as are most of the enemies here, well, honestly. It seems to have a decent amount of HP, though. I think that I'm getting very unlucky with damage rolls. Silver Axe. 
a heal potion. So that was actually a pretty worthwhile amount of treasure, even if a lot of it was low gold numbers. I am not fighting you. Give me a minute. Okay, never mind. I was able to run away instantly. Thank God. I did not check the empty air there. Uh, Risa, cast guilt heal on everybody. I don't want to really take chances with... Don't want to take chances with being low on HP in this dungeon. Oh, is there seriously no... There is no door that will take me outside in this segment. Uh, I may have to do some real quick running around. Okay, turns out that there was a door that was not too far away from where I was. Um, we have multiple choices, or at least, supposedly, there's... This uh, center thing doesn't look exactly look, uh, but considering that this is damage floor, I think this is a point where I'm going to have to check my guide for a second, so hold on a moment. Okay, so the right path is the one we want. Now, you can uh, use the safe spots on the floor to minimize the amount of damage you take. But it's not exactly, um, ugh. oh, these, um, these Cerebus, uh, these hellhounds here, they have the Scorch ability, which is actually not doing very much damage to me. I remember this attack being a lot more dangerous when used by other enemies, but... I guess these guys just don't have uh, particularly high power on their Scorch. Although, I don't really want to take any chances with dealing with them. Luckily, they seem to go down quick enough. Probably didn't need to cast Ice 2 there, but whatever. It is still party-wide damage, so... So, best be careful. We have our stairs here. Uh... Okay, this is interesting. Give me a minute. Alright. So, we want to go this way. Across this... Thing of fire. And, uh, I may not be as, ah, uh, shit, I think I've gotten lost again. Uh, I may need a minute to get my bearings straight. Hold on. Okay, so you want to go through the left pathway here. I was on the right track for the most part, but I wasn't completely, uh... wasn't completely, um... On point. I am... God, it is so hot and stuffy in this room that I cannot think straight. I think I may have made a terrible mistake closing my windows up. I may need to wait until I have an AC unit put into my room and I have it on for like a good solid hour before I start recording again because oh man I feel awful. <laughs> uh, this, this entire LP has just been exposing how not smart and or coordinated I can be sometimes. Uh, which 
I don't know exactly how entertaining that is to watch, but I get the feeling that some of you might enjoy that more than you probably want to admit. So, you're welcome. Thankfully, I don't think we have too much of the dungeon left. I think we'll be... Uh, yeah, we have stairs right here. And we have a room with treasure chests. We get money, and I think that if you open, try to open the treasure chest from the bottom side, there'll be an enemy. Kind of like the, uh, this one. Um, actually, I said don't attack. I want you to heal. Unless you cast a weak ice spell. I don't know. Weak spells can kind of be... They can either be useful if you're facing against off against one enemy, or they cannot be. Most of the time they tend to be so... <coughs> excuse me. Weak that... They're not exactly worth using, but... I mean, if you're just against one enemy, you're probably not going to use them in any other situation. Sometimes they do a good 80 damage to your opponent. And we get a soft potion for our troubles, which may be helpful, probably will be in the future. And we have more Cerb Cerebus. Cerberus is, or casting Scorch on me is not very effective, but it does a real good job at wasting my time. I'm going to cut away. Okay. So through here we have another treasure chest. And I need to make a decision real quick. So hold on. Okay. Want to take the left path first. I probably could have guessed that. How's our HP doing? Oh, uh, could be a lot better. I'm just going to expend a couple of casts of Cure 3 and a couple of casts of Cure 2. And we have a bunch of treasure boxes here. We have a pure potion. Uh, fight against a Grey Worm, which gives us a bunch of money. We have 880 gold, an Ice Sword, and another fight against a Grey Worm, and finally a Flame Shield. Um, so real quick, uh, I don't remember the Flame Shield power in, um, oh, but I know that the ice sword is actually better than the flame sword that I currently have equipped, so, it's actually gonna go on me, so that I can do a nice damage, like my buddy Brian is, oh, and we have bulls, that was a load of bull. That was not a very good joke. <laughs> um, I mean, they're they're actually weaker than the than the zombies. Apparently, being dead makes you stronger. Well, I I mean, I guess I can see that. I mean, being dead does technically make the zombies stronger because it means uh, are less resistant to pain, I guess, but. Uh, it also means that they become weak to fire and harm, so, I mean, that's a trade-off right there. Thankfully, these are enemies that you should be accustomed to fighting by now, um, considering that they were found throughout the Earth Cave. I... I am trying to string sentences together and failing because it is so fucking hot in here. 
Oh. Alright. Let's bop these fuckers quickly. say one last but there's probably going to be another room up to the right there but we'll explore that in due time At 10 gold I stepped on the fucking booby trap again 155 gold so that was that was useful I mean every little bit of gold piece counts uh, this treasure box is empty, but we get 2,000 gold from this one, and a house. So that's nice. That's very, very handy. Da, da, da. Oh, that's something that the Red Hydras can do, is they have the Cremate, which is more party-wide fire damage. And it's stronger than the Scorches that we were getting from those uh, Cerberuses. So we have more treasure boxes enemies guarding them. This Agama here, I don't know if it has the, um, has any sort of, like, party-wide fire attack. <sighs> I'm burping again, because I had lunch right before this. Um, so I don't know if it has any, like, weird ability. And we have another one here. And we get a wooden staff from that, which is totally, totally worth it. Totally not useless to us. I am beginning to get real sick of all of these goddamn random encounters that I've been running into. Thankfully, I think that the dungeon is over soon. But then again, maybe not. We could also have, like, a really annoying amount of split pathways. Uh, I am going to heal up and check my guide again for the right way to go. So the good news is that this room is actually a lot more straightforward than it looks. You just have to go to the left for the only bit of treasure that's located here. But unfortunately, you do have a couple of battles that you need to fight beforehand. Um, you have this Agama here, and you'll have one more monster right in front of the treasure chest. And if we step here, we have a red dragon. Red dragons are no joke. They have uh, some pretty nasty, they have a nasty party-wide fire attack, if I remember correctly. So I'm just going to pelt this guy with ice spells and hope he goes down quick. Yes, yes, getting healed. Let's please move on. Brian does 200 damage, 204 to be specific. He's two. Oh. Oh. And it was that simple. Well, that's nice. And in this chest here, we can't hold anymore. God bless it. Um, I said, drop the silver gauntlet. It very much hurts me that I have to be throwing away potential items that we can sell. But thankfully, we get some flame armor. Unfortunately, we had to fight this freaking Agama again. 
Hold on. Alright, that was simple. Are you... <sighs> Fuck you too, game. Well, Brian got a level up after that battle, as did Risa. That's nice. Alright, I am kind of starting to regret not getting the Ice 2 spell from Gaia for me, for my character, uh, because it would have... or the Ice 3 spell, I should say, because it would have made some of the fights in this dungeon a little bit... Oh, and we have a Red Giant here. Uh, Red Giants. Uh, uh, what do they do, actually? I think they... I think that they're kind of like the other giant variations in that they're basically just have the ability to punch you really hard. <laughs> Which, I mean, is still dangerous, but I don't think they have any sort of, like, party-wide attack. At least I hope not. Of course, I say that, and the game's probably going to... Probably gonna uh, give me some grief for trying to sass it. To this room here from the down left passage and we have another orb here talk to it is it you the tinder that defeated the earth the fiend of earth and disturbed my sleep I carry will now show you the force of fire and you shall burn in its flames this is Carrie otherwise known as the Merilith uh, she is the fiend of fire and the next uh, enemy on our hit list. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an A-Fire spell, so Rice is going to have to... Um, Rice is going to have to make use of... Equal two. Lewis cast fast on Brian, and Zane casts fast on himself. So that way we can get more hits in on our physical attacks and see if we can just bop her. 300 damage. Not enough to kill her, but I mean, over 300 damage. You know, that's something. That's nothing to sneeze at, at all. Ooh, but that's uh, one thing about fighting her is that uh, she can hit hard because she, you know, obviously a creature that has four arms, uh, you know, is capable of uh, doing a lot of hits. But luckily I have a Cure 4 spell, which means that I can instantly heal my character back to max. I cast Ice 3 on her for really paltry damage, that's actually kind of bad. Wow, even Brian's taking like 50 damage a hit. Alright, Brian. Eight hits, and down she goes. Like the rest of the bosses in this game, she is not that much of a threat. But, step on this thing here. Teleport out. And behold, we have the second elemental orb restored. So that's two orbs down. We are pretty much halfway done with the game at this point. There's not really a whole lot, um, well, I say there's not really a whole lot left to do, but there, there actually is, um, you know, so. But the next time, um, I think this is going to have to do it for this episode, so. Next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy 1 on the NES, we will, uh, we will start, uh, journeying around the world to find the location of the last two elemental orb dungeons and see if we can't, uh, can't do a, a little bit of work towards, uh, getting, getting, uh, access to those dungeons. So, until next time, my name is Zane, better known as the King Bahamut. Uh, and like, comment, and subscribe. I am going to open the windows and turn the fan on right now, because I can't, I can't beat the heat no more. 
We're out of the volcano, but I need to get out of the oven here. See you next time.